Hey guys, Agro Ninja here, and welcome back to another episode of Stoneblock 3. In today's episode, we're going to hit the ground hard. We're going to do a ton of resource gathering. We're going to do a whole bunch of building, and of course continue to expand our tech capabilities and work through the quest book. So let's go get started. So you may notice a few things have changed in our boiler area. Actually, a lot of things have changed. And that's because we finally got back to streaming. And in between episodes, we spent a few hours working on this area. And I'm really happy with the advancements we made in our block palette. You can see we brought over our deep slate design from Enid Manica, but we did add an additional block. And I would like to add at least one or two more to kind of give it a bit more texture. We've also continued to evolve our columns and I'm not 100% happy with these, so we'll probably tweak them a bit more in this episode. But the biggest change you're gonna notice is our boiler itself. The way we had it set up before, it didn't really look realistic and it was taking up a lot of space. So we compacted the design a little bit more. I like how we now have the water coming up one side and offset by one block connecting to the boiler itself. And on the opposite side, we have all of our steam engines. We have three less than we did before, but this is still more than enough to carry the cap full capacity of this level nine boiler. And since it's more compact, we were able to add a second boiler. So now we have two, which gives us 147,000 and some odd change SU per boiler, plus the 59 and some odd change SU from our water wheels. In today's episode, at some point, I would like to connect all of that SU and then make it accessible anywhere in this area. That's gonna be quite the task. But before we do that, we need to work on gathering some additional resources because I wanna do a lot of building and touch up work in our base and we are burning through our blocks like it is nobody's business. So we're gonna get started by gathering some resources and then figuring out a way to fuel these things 24 seven so they're not just sitting here useless. <laughs> so let's go get started. So we should have plenty of resources to last us for quite some time. What I wanna work on now is figuring out a way to keep our boilers running 24 seven. So they're constantly providing SU. Someone on the previous episode suggested in a comment that we should fill them with lava. And that is something that I definitely want to do. And the method that we've decided to go with is using our lava chickens that we actually created in the last episode. So if we come over here, you can see that one of our chickens, if we can figure out which one it is, I think it's this one right here. I think that looks like the lava chicken. It is the lava chicken. <laughs> so you can see it generates these lava eggs. We've already got quite a bit. We're gonna move it along with the water chicken over to this area over here. And the reason we're gonna do that is we're gonna set up two additional fluid tanks, which will mirror our boiler setup minus the steam engines. And we're gonna use one for storing water and one for storing lava. So we'll be able to send water and lava anywhere in our base. That's kind of the plan. And we're gonna set that up right here. So it's going to mirror this area over here, but it'll be slightly different. I think it'll end up looking pretty cool. Ooh, we just fail. <laughs> but we're gonna head back to our workshop area because we need an additional machine to craft a couple of components for our setup idea. Now that we're back over in our workshop area, we're gonna take a look at JDI. And the machine that we need to craft is this rolling mill. And the reason we need to craft this rolling mill is we need to be able to craft these straws so we can add these to our blaze burners so they'll accept lava. Because by default, they do not accept a liquid fuel. 
but we need to be able to craft some of these which are just made from bamboo but you know what now that i'm thinking about it i don't know if we have any bamboo we may have to set that up on a hopper pot but before we do that let's go ahead and craft our rolling machine and we should be able to just stick it over here for right now maybe on this conveyor belt yes that should work let's see if we have any bamboo we should have some we need nine total Actually, we need more than that. We need 18. I forget. We have two boilers now. And if we have any, it'll be in here. We have sugar cane. We do have bamboo. So we'll go ahead and collect 18. And I'm probably going to set this up on a hopper pot. But I'll do that off camera later. And we should be able to just stick these in the rolling machine. I'm not exactly sure how this works. Let's just try it with one. Do you click it in? Uh, let's try dropping it in. Oh, that seems to be working. And it'll probably spit it out here in just a moment. Uh, it must hold on to it like the millstone. Okay, so if that's the case, let's try dropping the rest on there. Yes, we'll let that run. And while that's running, we need to fire up some more copper plates because we're gonna need a ton of copper plates in order to craft up our fluid tanks that we're gonna need for our setup so I've already been working on some you can see here we've got quite a few but I don't think this is gonna be enough but this that we're crafting should definitely be more than enough so I'm gonna wait for this to finish up and then we're gonna head over to our new area and start on the next section So I got this all set up and like we did with the boilers, I've set it up and it'll probably change in the future. You know how I am, but I'm actually pretty happy with this. So it may not change too much. We have two fluid tanks, both have a capacity of a 648,000 millibuckets, which is 648 buckets worth of lava, plus whatever sits in the lines. I don't know if that actually counts, but on one side, we have moved over a roost where we're gonna have our lava chicken and a chute which drops down into a diamond chest which will then pull out with this belt funnel into an item drain on the other side we've set up another one and this is where we're going to set our water chicken and if we go down below you can kind of see how it's all set up it's really ugly down here right now we will get around to cleaning it up down here eventually it's kind of a kind of a maze so we've got all our pops connected and if I'm doing this wrong, let me know. I, I didn't know any other way to do it to make sure they were all connected. And we're running a pump here, and we're running a pump right here. That should be enough distance. I believe liquids can travel 16 blocks before it needs another pump. And we're also running a pump here and here, which seems to be working. 
as you've seen we tested a few of the lava eggs and it is at least getting to the tank it's not getting past this pump right here but i'm hoping that's because we don't have straws in our blaze burners which we can go ahead and do and test this out so we'll go ahead and grab those out of our inventory and do we just right click it appears so we're gonna right click all these bad boys yeah and the lava is getting to them well that that is awesome we just gotta make sure each one of these get a straw And the burn time is pretty ridiculous, so. Now we'll go around to the other side. That was all of our lava. I don't know if that one, if this setup is going to be enough. We may have to tweak it a little bit. We may not be generating enough lava. I noticed it was a little slow. Uh, I'm missing two somewhere. I'm not seeing one on this one. Why is it not taking a straw? Take the straw. I'm not sure these but neither one of these are taking a straw. Let's let's pop this copper casing off. Take a straw. Alright, we're gonna pop the burner. Pop that one too. Alright, let's put the burners back. And let's try, now I'm not showing a straw. Oh, no, there they are. That was really weird. Now they all have straws. What we should be able to do now, the reason I haven't put the chickens in yet, is I want to move really quickly all the eggs that we already have over there for both lava and water. Go ahead and move them over to the diamond chest before we put our chickens back in place. So before we do that, let's drop off all of our create stuff in this chest. And that's create, create, create. And then over here, we'll put some of these building blocks. And we'll just throw those out. We don't want them. And we'll stick our chicken and building tools up here. And now we should be able to shuttle those eggs back and forth. So we did get all our eggs moved over and I noticed that this cod bear belt is spinning the wrong way. So we'll have to go and fix that. But for now, we'll go ahead and throw our chickens in there and they will continue to produce. And now we have infinite water and lava and almost 650 bucket storage. And it does appear that that's enough lava These things seem to be running. Ah, oh, the heat's low. That one's full. I guess we'll just have to give it a little bit of time and monitor it and see what it does. But I think what we're going to do now is just take a moment. I'm going to fix this conveyor belt and uh, figure out what we're going to work on next. So I do have some good news. We are producing more lava currently than we are using. We also fixed our conveyor issue over here. So we're now filling up our other fluid tank with water. And I think we can actually make this setup even more efficient by adding a couple more of these item drains because we're producing plenty enough chicks. See, this chest is already full and, and stopped up. I'm thinking we could probably add maybe two more of these on both sides and then add two more inputs and two more outputs on both of our tanks. And that will give us significantly more lava and water availability but it's still enough to 
keep our boilers running. So we're finally ready to start using some of the incredible amount of SU that we're generating. And what I was thinking about setting up was a process to get steel sheets for train casing. We had looked at doing this a couple of episodes ago when we wanted to finish up the create mod, but we got stuck because we weren't able to make this train casing, which requires a sturdy sheet. Now that we have an infinite supply of lava, we can go ahead and set up this sequence, which is basically a lava spout and then getting pressed twice. And that turns an obsidian dust into a sturdy sheet. But in order to get obsidian dust, we need to set up our crusher, which we already have. But I want to start moving that stuff over. So I think that's what we're going to do. We're going to work on cleaning some more of this area up. Maybe this whole entire side. Just go ahead and decorate it. And then we can bring in some of our machines, which I can't wait to get set up. So let's get busy. So, mistakes were made. As we take a quick look at our new area, you'll probably notice that this is not live. And that's because I'm narrating over this clip. When working on this episode, I've been also streaming. And on one of those streams, I forgot to unmute my mic before recording the next couple of segments. So we're gonna narrate through this. At the very least, it'll be funny. Because <laughs> I've never done anything like this. At this point in the clip, I'm talking about the roof and, and future plans for the rest of the build. And I basically am talking about how until my tech gets a little bit more advanced and I have access to flight or jet packs, the roof will probably be the last thing we tackle because I got some pretty cool ideas and it'll be kind of hard to do without having some type of flight. Then we kind of go over the new area and how good the deep slate looks versus the spruce and all the tough that we're using and then we head down to our new setup a little tip here or should i say teaser it doesn't work <laughs> the whole point of this contraption is to get sturdy casing which we need to finish up the create mod 
And we'll let past Agri Ninja catch up. He's talking about Sturdy Kaysen and how you get it. You use Obsidian, run it through a series of getting lava from a spout and two mechanical presses. What past Agro Ninja didn't take into consideration is that it's going to require additional brass funnels, I think is what those are called, with this type of setup. So it's just going to run and hit that depot and stop. At this point, I'm talking about how we pulled the lava over from our main supply and it's feeding it to the spout. And we're also connected to our boilers now. And I actually didn't highlight that in this clip or any future clips. So once we're done, we'll probably go back and take a look at that. So we put the obsidian and it's gonna fail. At this point in my mind, while talking and recording, I'm trying to decide, well, do I wanna cut this? Do I wanna say, hey, I'm gonna fix it and we'll come back? <laughs> or do I just wanna re-record the video? I decided to keep working on it and just do it on camera. I tried to throw a funnel on like I talked about. That of course didn't work. So we're gonna pull that back off. What we end up doing is tearing all this out and just installing one conveyor all the way through. Cause it will function with just the conveyor belt. We'll give Pass Agro Ninja a little bit of time to figure that out. <laughs> While we wait on him, if you have any thoughts on our build so far, any ideas or suggestions, definitely leave those in the comments. We got a few more tweaks that we're gonna make to the build as we continue to work on it, but it's really starting to come together. The primary areas that need attention is the roof and the water area, which we're gonna get to in the next few episodes. So at this point, like I said earlier, I decided to rip it all out and go to just one conveyor. It takes past Agri Ninja a moment to figure out exactly how he's going to do that, like with everything else he does. It's kind of fun talking in the, I, would this be considered the third person? I don't even know. <laughs> So at this point, we're gonna connect our conveyor back up. So we now have one conveyor. We don't need that there. So let's go ahead and remove that. Pop that off. And then we're gonna throw one more shaft on and then attach a gearbox so it's connected to the end. And it is magically going in the correct direction. We don't have any more cases to test, but we do have yeah, there we go. And then it smashes it and done. But we'll call that a success. <laughs> I do already have plans to make this even more compact, which I believe I mentioned in that little bit right there. Because there's no need for it to be that long. I don't know. We just have to see because I want it to be functional, but also look cool, which is the fun thing about Create. You can really make it look cool. And the current shaft and pipeline, that's probably temporary. I've got some ideas for cleaning all that up once we bring some more machinery over. And I believe at this point, we're gonna head back over to our starter workshop area so we can work on finishing up the create mod. So back over at our starter create area, Pass Argo Ninja is working on the final components needed to finish off the Create Quest line. And for some reason, we had an issue with the mechanical crafter. I couldn't get it to craft these two components that didn't use all of the grids. So I had to pair out some of them and then it worked. It was really weird. I tried moving it around into different spots and it just wouldn't work. So I'm not sure if I was doing something wrong or not. If you guys notice anything out of the ordinary or have tips on why those weren't crafting, definitely let me know in the comments. At this point, we're gonna go in and accept the reward for our electric motor and then take a look at what's needed for the alternator. But before we do that, Pass Aqua Ninja, well, he got a little bit excited because he just got another tier five cobble gen. 
which is going to save us about 20 minutes of farming blaze heads because in between episodes to get ready for our ne next big addition to our area i was going to add some additional cobble generators so now we already have one more so we'll probably farm enough heads for maybe one more so we'll have three total now we're getting the components needed to make the alternator together very similar to the other one it just requires i believe it's iron sheets instead of brass sheets and right now we're getting the components together to make the capacitor as well as maybe it's just the capacitor is the only thing that we don't have at this point yeah that's what we're making now Now we're going to head over and put everything into the mechanical crafter. And give it a moment to craft. Now we have an alternator, which finishes out one more quest. We're going to go ahead and accept those rewards. Which leaves us with our mechanical harvester, which is pretty simple. It's just some indesiot alloy, iron sheets, and an indesiot casing, which we have all of those items. We're just going around collecting everything and working on getting it all into our crafting station in order to craft it. I was trying to find the NJEI so I could just shift click it over and I finally decided to just put it in manually, which is what I should have done from the beginning. It's a pretty simple recipe. At this point, I think I'm finished with create. Line. I get all excited, I'm celebrating, and then I realize the little ding didn't go off for finishing a quest line. And that's because we still need to make a blaze cake. Which is going to require a couple of changes and a process and a few items that we hadn't done before. So we're getting some netherrack to run it through our question wheel, which is going to give us one of the things we need. We went ahead and grabbed a little bit more of the crushed obsidian so we could demo our correctly configured setup <laughs> because we're going to have to run the cakes through that lava spout as well. At this point, past Agri Ninja gets a little confused with how to make the blaze cake base. So he does a little bit of running back and forth before he finally realizes that you need to put a bowl under the mechanical press in order to make the base. And we're just going to go ahead and skip ahead to that point. So we now have the basin under the mixer and we go to drop our items into them and then we realize oh we need to pop our filter off so i think we end up pulling the whole funnel off which i need to put back <laughs> and we pull our components back out to drop back on the conveyor belt and they should start mixing shortly well not mixing getting squashed i i don't know <laughs> But anyways, we're now making blaze cake base, which we go ahead and we grab one. And then we head back over to our spout. And now you can see that we've modified it. So we have one conveyor belt moving and it does create our cake base, which we're about to hear the amazing little sound of finishing a quest line. And with that, the create 
mod is complete. Obviously, we have tons more create plans, as I mentioned in this clip, but the quest line is at least finished, which continues our goal of completing quests. Well, guys, this series is continue to be a bit of a challenge we continue to have little derpy moments and really frustrating planning and development of our build area i'm way behind schedule we got so much to do and i keep falling behind and the time that i'm putting into this you would not believe based off the end result i hope you guys are enjoying this i'm really going to work on trying to add more to this build over the next couple of episodes and really tackle that quest book. But our current issue this episode, on top of <laughs> our recording derpy moment, and hopefully that narration wasn't too bad. I've never tried to do anything like that. But the current issue, you may notice that none of this stuff is spinning. And I was like, whoa, what's going on? So the first thing I did was run over to our boilers. And what do you know? Something has happened to these. It's completely busted. I I don't know what happened. I, so I've got to reattach all of these and get them spinning again. If you guys noticed that I did something wrong, let me know. Give me a second to get all these hooked back up. And then I'll take you guys down below and show you the temporary hookup we were using and maybe something was just hooked up wrong so just give me one moment the hit boxes on this can be a pain there we go we got that one all the way done let's hook that up that up it's been running fine for days and a couple of hours where we actually were using it on our boiler and then i noticed that it wasn't rutted so something caused it to bust everything. Really weird. But we got all of our shafts back in place. Let's grab our encased chain drive. And, and maybe I'm just overstressing the chain drive. I don't know if it has a max capacity. Maybe I need to break that up some more. If you more experienced create engineers can let me know what I did wrong in the comments, it would be much appreciated. I'll be doing a bit of reading in between episodes, but this seems to be connected again let's attach a chain drive over there if we can get to it um i believe i have a way over there no i don't but we can do this we can go let's pull this out one more uh, we need to go down over and then up uh, we really got to work under here and clean this up make it look nicer all right let's put our encased fan back so that should all be working and it worked like this for a while so i'm not sure what happened i might be overstressing it we've got 294 000 su if you guys notice something that i'm overstressing or doing wrong let me know <laughs> but i think for today guys we're gonna go ahead oh look it disconnected here as well now it's spinning is it staying connected says network stress is low we're not using a whole lot of our su capabilities very very strange this is almost maxed out well as i was about to say i think for today we're going to go ahead and just wrap this one up and go ahead and go back to the drawing board for the next one as always, I hope you guys have enjoyed today's episode. If you did, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. If you have any suggestions or feedback, please leave a comment. And don't forget to subscribe. This is Echo Ninja, and that's a wrap.